ladies and gentlemen, as promised from uh, CD Trumpet, the new patch has arrived a lot quicker than I thought it would. And we get a bunch of new stuff, including the inclusion of coal finally into the game. So we're going to take a look at some of this equipment. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the things that I haven't bought for the railway. And then we're going to take a look at the things that I have purchased for the railway, um, along with maybe a little tour of some of the add-ons that I've put in. Obviously, with the addition of coal, we're going to have to add a, a coaling facility into the um, quote-unquote layout, map, whatever, route. And I'm going to also have to um, add some coal cars so that we can, additional coal cars, so we can bring more coal down from the mine. And the mine is going to get a lot more important here as several of my engines are now coal-fired. Or... Should I say locomotives? Anyway, first up, we have a little skeleton car here. This carries one less log than the normal cars, but this would be a good car to use with Betsy and or the uh, level two Porter. So you can see there's a couple different color schemes and we'll go through each of these. That's a cool color, actually. Oh, wait, that's our same yellow. And there's like a black. Next up, that's new. We now have a new uh, drop bottom hopper. Uh, this is this one's got smaller. The one that the other one that we have our our um, just regular hopper it has larger wheels. So I guess what that kind of says to me is that this one's more modern than this one. This one's probably a little bit older. Look at the gearing on the sides and stuff. Yeah, this this one's definitely a more modern hopper than this guy. Still cool though. Comes once again in several colors. No yellow. <laughs> I like that. That's a cool, cool looking car. Next up, we have this coffin tank car. And if we go through the different settings, you can see there's a couple different colors available. Well, nice looking car. This is a more modern tank car than the other one that we had in the game. Um, I don't know... Honestly, uh, why, why you would, the price, let's see, is a lot less. Okay. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's hard to tell which one's more modern. What makes me say it's more modern, this is more like what we have nowadays, but the trucks on this, and eh, maybe this is the more modern truck. Here we have springs. Here we have a leaf spring. I'm not sure which one. I don't know. Those of you that know which one's newer. Actually, does this have the year in here? No, it doesn't. Build date, 1889, 1903. Yeah, so these are newer. What's weird is it's kind of funny. In, in the long run, though, we went back to this style. So, <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say, I, I thought these were the other ones. I thought these were the older trucks, and apparently I was correct by a couple years. Um, next up, we have a boxcar that is, I think, exactly... Nope, carries both of these carry a little teeny bit more. This one costs significantly less. I'm not sure. These are the same price. Same thing. We got a bunch of different colors. And it honestly, in I think IRL, this could be used as a boxcar, but I don't believe these were really used as boxcars often. They were really used to move livestock, horses and cattle, sheep, pigs. Uh, that's the kind of, this is basically, that's why they call it a stock car, because it's, it's for moving stock. So, livestock. Now we're going to put one of these in operation in a little bit, but uh, next up we have the 10 mile, which is a, a fairly affordable 8,400, it develops 8,400 pounds of uh, tractive effort. I think this is what uh, CD Trumpet was talking about when he said the Tweetsy, I think is what this is called. Uh, in the game, they decided to call it a 10 mile and it's low tier, tier two. So you can get this engine or this locomotive pretty early on in game. Um, once again, it's a little bit pricey, but not bad, especially for the tractive effort that it puts out. Um, and it's articulated. So this, this whole thing turns and this turns in the back, allowing you to kind of, uh, get around some pretty tight corners without having any problems. The other thing that I like about this engine or locomotive is that it, um, it has a very good view uh, out the cabin. So when you're, you can actually drive this engine. You, you know how a lot of the engines you can't see out the windows. You can't really adjust your height 
to see out the windows well. Well, this engine has a really good forward and backwards view. Uh, and so you can, you know, run this engine from the cockpit pretty comfortably and still see what's going on outside the engine. Also, um, it's got a fairly large uh, cabin, so there's room for you to walk around there. Maybe have a friend in there helping you uh, watch out the other side. And it is coal fired. So this means you're going to have to, if you're going to use this engine, you're going to have to introduce coal into uh, your layout. Got a lot of smokestack options on this one. I like that. There's some big ones. And this one's cool because it's got the sparks actually dropping down on the ground as this is working to arrest all the sparks from going out. It's pretty neat. Mostly they have the same three headlights. This one's no exception, but it has additional headlights with horns. <laughs> Love that. That's such a, an 1890s thing to do. Uh, different paint schemes on this one. This one's got a lot of different paint schemes. You basically have fancy purple, a little bit less fancy purple, fancy green, black with a really nice uh, blue kind of, what do they call that? But like a blued steel uh, boiler. And then this color I couldn't resist, uh, like a blueberry, fancy blueberry. And it gets, you know, it's kind of cool when you put the name on it, like, you know, Blue, blue bell. Or if you go with my channel's, you know, mantra, V blue bell. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so moving along. Next up, we have the Ruby Basin. And uh, she has a very important message for us here. That's why we haven't done a video about scrapping yet. Because Star Citizen won't run. <laughs> it's 318 came out and it's broke. Anyway, moving along. Uh this is, I believe, a British tank engine that was probably historically brought over to the United States to be used. Uh, let's see, what locomotive. Now it says it's made by Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia. So maybe they were just trying to copy it, or I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't know the history of it, but uh, it obviously has British flavor to it. Uh, once again, just like the uh, Tweetsie or 10 Mile, Ruby Basin has great visibility. Um, in fact, this one, it's been designed, and obviously just like the Class 48, you got a light on the front and the back, and even a cow catcher on the back. So this engine was really uh, designed to run forward and backwards. Um, you can run it either way, long front, short front. Um, and so it's designed. The only issue that I have with this one is that, uh, and I don't, I mean, maybe you can access it from the middle, but the boiler for the water, you have to fill it up on the sides here, like on those on these side nurples right there in this. And so one of these tanks fills both, but uh, it's really hard to get your water. You might have to have a special water tower placed for uh, this engine uh, because it's it's off. This is a weird positioning for the water tank. And so most of the regular ones won't reach this. You're going to have to place a second one for this engine specifically. That's a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. Let's hover back down here and uh, take a look at the different paint schemes. Uh, smokestacks, we got once again a nice variety. Those are, there's five smokestacks available. We have three different headlights and, oh, look, I didn't realize you could get horns on this. Six headlights. Two with horns. <laughs> that's really cool. Okay. Anyway, that's pretty neat. Uh, and then we have different paint schemes. I really like this one. But this just brings out that English heritage there. You definitely, I mean, once again, it's an American engine, but they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that just screams British. And this one's really nice. I like this scheme too. Uh, now, five and two look very the same. Let's see. Trying to see what the difference is. Okay, so two has outlines on it with white, and then number five gets rid of a lot of those outlines and just makes it a plain working engine. Probably, I had fun and I got a colored one of these for our our, our rail, um, not layout, but for our, our route. But um, I, I painted it fun colors, but honestly, if it, I, I really probably would go for this color over the other color that I picked. So anyway. 
Oh, and I should have mentioned that also uses coal uh, as this. Same as the new Cook 260. We have a we have both the old vintage Cook 260 that was the wood burner, which is a great engine. No other paints still. Uh, and we have the new Cook uh, 260. This is basically just the cold burning version. Um, I kind of like the detail. This one has the blued steel again for the uh, boiler. And we have a couple different smokestacks for it. You know, we've run this. Once again, this one has good visibility out the cockpit. This is a great engine. I guess they're not real engines from what I from what CD Trumpet was telling us. Like it's kind of a mix between a couple different engines from that era, but it's the the Cook is a real company, but the Mogul is not uh the 260 is not really like necessarily a real engine. I love that. That looks really cool with the oh, it still says Star Citizen won't work. <laughs> uh I love that with the wooden that's a real nice look there. Um that's really nice looking too, just like murdered out. <laughs> and once again, another another murdered out. We got instead of the blue steel, we've got just black, but with the wood cabin instead of a black wood cabin. Oh wow, that is extroverted. Oh, Christmas train. Uh, you see these on uh, like this color scheme a lot on like those Bachman sets that you. Find at toy stores that used to be like 20 bucks and now they're like $300. Uh, do you guys remember that? Am I just talking out my butt? I remember going to KB Hobby and getting the Empire Builder, which was a steam locomotive like this in scale, like four or five cars and track that goes with it. And it was like $18. And those things, there are maybe 25 bucks, uh, like the nice sets were like 20 or 25. And now. Dude, like I, we went to the hobby store the other day and I was looking at some of these and they actually had an engine that looked just like this and an engine that looked just like this. They weren't cook moguls, but they were similar. 250 bucks, dude. And then one kit was like four. The one that had like the more Christmassy looking engine, $400. Unbelievable. Anyway, I love this. If I buy one of these, I'm definitely getting this paint scheme <laughs> and we're going to call it blue. Uh, we still have the Cook 280. Uh, moving along. I can't. I don't pay attention to the Class 70. I think it's been here all along. I don't I don't know. You guys tell me. But this is the one we're getting to. We have this new, a brand new car. Uh, we have this ET and WNC. I don't know what we're going to call this to make it easier, shorter, whatever to remember. Maybe Wincy or something like that. Uh, I don't know what the cute name is for it, but. Uh, this is a very large, I think, is it more track? Yeah, it's more attractive effort than the Denver and Rio Grande. It might be the highest in the game. I'm going to pop through real quick here. Nope. Climax is still 17,000. That produces 16,5. So it's just under the climax and pulling power. You probably can pull uphill. Uh, as you can see here, it's got a set of four drivers. That's a lot of drivers. You're going to have a hard time on tight corners. But this is a really nice running engine if you... Have your route set up and a nice long sweeping route. The engine will fit. It'll fit anyway. It's gonna work. You know these engines all work. It seems like, but uh, I don't haven't run this yet. Once again, it's coal fired. Different smokestacks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's an ugly. Oh god. Do we get the horns? No, nope, we don't get horns on this one. And then different paint schemes. Oh, I like that. That's pretty sweet. That is just classic American steam drain. And that's it. Those are the three colors. So you get greeny green, black mixed with green. It's probably, the, I think that's the scheme I would go with on this locomotive. That might be my favorite for this one. All right. So let's now take a look at some of the other things that they've put in. Uh, we've got included some new facilities. We have a coaling tower, which I'm going to install here in a minute. And we'll, I'll, once I've installed it, I'll show you how I did it. I'm not sure how it works. Uh, Javius was telling me it's pretty complicated, so I'll find out. Two new water towers. Uh, this one seems like it might work better with the uh, British locomotive because the pipe swings out to the side and goes 90 degrees. 
Uh, actually goes a 180. It goes from one side to the other. You can swing it back and forth. I couldn't figure out how to get it to start pouring. There's got to be a switch or something that I'm missing, but I couldn't make it pour. But there's that. That could work for that British locomotive. Um, not British, but the you know the the one that looks British, the Ruby Basin. And then we have another new water tower here. These both hold 400, so they've given us new options. There's a new option for a simple pass-through engine shed. Uh, whereas you have the parking ones, this one has no tracks inside. It's just it's just a shed like so. Um, so you can just run some tracks and then cover them up with this. Whoops, wrong button. All right, last but not least, we've got this three-way stub switch, and I'm going to show you one of these on my layout. Now, I picked Harp Right Ballast. I don't know what that means. I, I'm, a, I'm thinking... We'll take a look at it because it really, it it's, it's a, um, nope. I always do that. Sorry guys. Right here. This is where we put it in and this is all new to our, our layout. Um, it's here. And I don't know what harp right and harp left mean aside from this one's reverse. So when it's pointing this way, the train's going that way, which is a little confusing. I switch it here. I switch it there. It's now going out this way to the right, even though this is pointing left. And then that's the center. I'm not sure, but that's cool how it works. You can see there, that's that's how it works. It slides back and forth. It's got those metal plates that allow the rails to flex. And that leads us to our new engine sheds back over there that I've installed. So none of this was here last time you guys saw it. We had this going along the back here, but none of this was here because I, I bought some more engines. So we're going to go take a look and see what we bought. Um, and I thought it'd be time that we can maybe put these away when the play session's done. Or if I have time between sessions and nothing's going on, like I had, we kind of left the server in chaos last time. And now I have some ordered trains that I've, I didn't put them together really, but um, I, you know, this is our, our train for the local uh, that goes around the factories. And then all of this stuff, th this car with the rails, the these new coal hoppers that I've purchased, and then over on this side, all of these um, beams need to go up to the coal mine. So we're going to have to um, use a double header Shea slash Climax, not Shea, uh, Heisler Climax double header in the next session uh, to get these up, to get that train up the hill. But anyway, I got the train waiting here. And then we have this, obviously this is the, this is the lowlands train here that services all the facilities down here. I am going to be buying some more of these goods cars so that we could have, we just need more obviously, because we keep, that's all we're really using right now are goods trains. And uh, they're, they're used to pull pretty much everything. So I think I'm going to buy six more of these cars and have them available. So when we're playing, we have room on the layout because we're getting seven or eight people every time we play. So it's time to, to get more engines. And I don't want to be in a situation where I have nothing for people to do. Uh, and once again, once these cars go up the hill, there's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's like 14 cars that are going up and having no one to work on them. Uh, and then I'm going to want them to bring coal back down. So uh, those guys are going to be real busy on that one. But that could take up to four people to do that trip. So um so first of all i've put the glendale back in here little eliza's parked and she's still very viable as an engine she can pull seven or eight cars up pretty steep hills um we've got the the gift uh saint christo and this is from cd trumpet <laughs> and uh that's the developer gift that he gave us a mogul 280 and so we'll be using this to Pull some of the heavier trains, though most of the trains are about the same. I, I try to keep trains about eight cars in length. You guys have seen both of those engines. But here's where we have one of the new ones. I purchased a Tweetsie. <laughs> and she's blueberry in color. I know, lovely. And she's got some antlers on her. So anyway, cool, just a cool engine. I wanted to hop in here so you can kind of see the cab view, what I was talking about. We see it's got a nice view out the front. You can see what's coming up. You can even open this window to make your visibility even brighter. And you can walk out onto the engine front for those of you that are very crowded. 
some of your crew members can stand up here and run the switches as you go through complicated parts of the layout slash root. Um, but a lot, a lot of room in here. Space for people to sit. Um, too bad that doesn't work. Oh, let's do let's shovel a, a thing of coal just so you can see it. So you open that just like you normally would, and you press the left mouse button to scoop and the right mouse button to chuck. And that's it. I'm not sure how much coal we have in here or how it goes down. I haven't used enough, but I think that pile just gets smaller until it's empty. And it doesn't, I don't really see a way to, does it tell us how much is in there? No, it doesn't. All right. Well, it is what it is. I don't know how to, to tell, but that's the inside of the 10 mile. But once again, really great looking locomotive. And I've parked the Del Norte in here. I'm not sure we're going to be using this engine much anymore. It's so small. It can only pull a couple cars. And we've already got the Shea to pull cars to and from the, the logging camp. So I don't really need a logging camp engine. But I'm sure she'll find her place in the world at some point. So... Uh, and then let's go take a look at the other new engine that I've added into the route. Close these doors. And I'll be back. Man, talk about a narrow fit. Now, one of the things about this engine, this is the uh, Ruby Basin. And, and it is a wide engine. Look at that. We, we are just, the cylinder is just, it'll pass it, but it's really close. Um, but this is what this guy looks up close, and it's this is a great looking engine. I do love it. Get the Molly Moo, and so I'm really happy with this. I think this is going to be a good engine for our our um, railroad. I'm using it right now. We can. This is an eight car train. We can use this to refill the coaling. Uh, the I'm sorry, the iron mine, and uh, I think that's the plan with this guy. Uh, because it's got enough. This has got plenty of pulling power for eight cars up any of the grades. She will not struggle anywhere on our route. So, uh, But she can also do uh, runs to the smelter to grab stuff if needed. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for engines that have eight to 10,000. And this one's got 13. So, In fact, I might even, I might even switch her out um, with the 10 mile and give her a new, a new train of stuff to bring from the steel mill she could be our steel mill runner because she's got the power to pull eight fully loaded steel cars up the mountain with no issues at all uh and the 10 mile trying to, i don't know if the ten, i'll have to try it we'll have to test the 10 mile out the 10 mile has 8400 tractive effort we were using the shea which has 5600 and the uh 3,500 Del Norte. And so we were about 9,000 tractive effort to get up the hill. And it was not able to make it. So actually, now I think about it, I might just need to leave this. Because the 10 mile, I don't think the 10 mile can pull it up either. You'd have to do still do a double header with the Shea. Um, it might make it up, but it's going to be really close. We'll have to test it at some point. Maybe seven cars, but eight cars, I don't think it's going to work. So anyway, you can't figure these things out when you're doing it. Might be time to actually, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, no, because it, that, yeah, it's not going to work. So, however, we did six cars, that might work if you did the 10 mile with six cars, or even the Glenbrook with six cars, it should be able to make it up. So, all righty. And so, there's that. So, anyway, let's go and hop inside and take a look at the inside of the cabin. Once again, this has got a really large cabin. Same deal. Coal chute at the bottom, got the light back there. But you can see here, just pretty decent uh, view out the front so you can run it like a real train there's your regulator right there brakes right here uh, but it is a very op operable train the other thing I like about this one actually I should do this for both of these nice whistle 10 miles the same let's go do that here is the 10 mile yeah, it's a big train. That's a weird whistle. 
Weird whistle for a weird engine. Alfred is definitely not a a normal looking engine. It is a, kind of a strange duck. Um, I was thinking with Alfred once again, and my plans change. We, I probably also will add another locomotive at some point, another bigger locomotive. Um, but Alfred could pull uh, the goods train around. You know this the flatlands here pretty easily because uh, she gets pretty heavy when she's full up with. Uh, fuel and all that stuff but we have options and that's the idea so when people come on you know there's different options some engines are like really like heavily purposed like the the climax is pretty much for pulling cars out of the yard over to the the factory picking up the uh heisler and then working its way up or vice versa i think the heisler's over here now but uh these two engines are definitely this one and the, the climax that's parked over there are definitely, yeah, this is the Heisler, right? No, that's the Climax. This is the Climax. Uh, the Heisler's over there. So but the two of those are meant to work together as a doubleheader team to get big trains up to the coal mine since it is a hard climb. I might still, and we, we did this before, once we start getting some of those bigger, faster engines and they add some speed into the game where the cars won't derail when they go over 20 miles an hour, um... I might still run a route because we used to have a we used to have a route that went from you know from the valley um, past this telegraph, which is here. I'll I'll jump over that you guys can see. Um, so here's where we are. This is the this route goes down to the smelter. This one goes back across the valley over to the sawmill, and that goes up to the iron ore mine up there. I'm thinking maybe we add another another line in here that. Um, somehow probably around maybe you bring it in there and take it around the back here and just follow the southern part of the map around and start working our way up and up and up and up and up and then arrive at the coal mine um so that we can you know get coal that way too and bring it back down and supply it and that way we can go either way but right now what we're doing is all of our freight goes through here it gets dropped off at the classification yard where the Shea, or I'm sorry, the Climax picks it up and the Climax and the Heisler work its way up here, the shortcut, rather than going all this all this way around. Um, but I might do both. If we get real busy with the server and there's lots of people playing, that might be an option for us. So um, that way we have, and there's a nice long route to run if somebody wants to take a long ride. They can take a long train up a, a slow slope with a big engine. And get a lot of materials out of that area. So that's an idea. Just a thought. <laughs> Another thought would be to run just for fun. Uh, you got the supply trains that come up and down. Maybe split a Y off this and have the Class 48 do the coal cars up here too. So we have an option to, if we got a train coming up and a train going down, we can you know make eastbound, westbound. Obviously the downbound traffic would be on this because it's steeper. And the upbound traffic would stay on the bridge. But that might be kind of fun, too, because this is a neat little area here. And it, it's fun to run along the mountainside. Definitely slower. Uh, I found that just having straight track, like, <laughs> it's funny, but it adds a lot of distance. So, like, if we're going to go here and uh, go straight up, this train will go a lot faster than the train that's weaving its way along the sides, obviously, because one's weaving and one's going straight. But this will be a much shorter route than that will, even though they're right next to each other. It's kind of funny. So that is it. I'm sorry we didn't really have a lot of operations on this video, but I wanted to share with you the new stuff. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna do one more thing, and I'm gonna that's gonna be adding the coaling station in. So let's do that. Now the first order of business is figuring out where it fits. It'd be nice to have it along here, where somewhere where most of the engines, if not all the engines, are gonna pass. Um, but I don't know how big it is, so let's just see what it looks like. And I know from, oh gosh, why is it so off kilter? Okay, that's the front of it. Why are we, arg? It has to be loaded from the back, and what JV has said is that that back area has to be kept clear I think because but uh, 
Because there's a pile of coal that builds up um, behind the rail that's there. So it's got a built-in rail already for supply. That's where you're going to go through and supply it. Um, so let's find a good place for this. Uh, maybe over here, honestly. Somewhere where... I uh, can't get on that hill, though. Mm. We could put it here. We've already got like another track going here, and there's space for it. So... I'm thinking right here. How do I rotate? Can I rotate this thing? Nope. That's really weird how they have you do this. I can't even really look up to see. There we go. So I'm going to try this right here. Uh, it's looking, It's going to sit high. See how high the tracks are, though? That's... Uh. A little further along. So we're going to have to put another switch in for sure. This might give us enough space for that, though. Okay, so let's see what happens if I place it here. Is that going to be... Is that chute? There we go. All right, let's see how the chute does. Can I reach the coaling tower? It's got a little bit of coal in it. I can't tell if it's going to stay. That looks right. That looks, uh, yeah, that looks right. That's as close as I can tell, though. Uh, all right, so this obviously is going to have to come down. And we're going to, I want the track to go out a little bit here because we're going to we're have to run a little higher. But we're going to have to run the coal cars over it, so we need to go past it. So we're just going to clear the area. I'll be back. I'll get this all cleared out. I'll be right back. All right. So we have the coaling tower installed. What I've done is I've run, I left the first track alone and then I've run a track all the way along the back here through the loading station here where you have to load the coal. And then it, it joins back up to the main line over on the other side there. That way a train coming down with coal can just go all the way through if it needs to. Uh, or it can go down there and back through, but it's uh, we just have a lot of options now, so I've kept it open there, um, and so that's that. So uh, I'm going to get some help. We're going to uh, Mike and I are going to go ahead and actually we'll maybe show some of this, but we're going to run this goods train along with the new coal hoppers up the hill to the coal mine, and then we're going to get some coal and bring it down and fill up the tower. So we will be uh, back once Micah gets on here. Are you going to drive the the climax, Mr. Micah? I. Uh Oh, that's the Heisler. Yeah. That's what I meant, the Heisler. Blow the whistle. Heisler. Okay. All right, so I'm going to... Yep, I just fueled it up, so I'm going to have... Come on, come on back. And I'm going to get you set up to connect to these cars here. Chugga 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 chugga. So we're gonna grab these wood wood beam cars first. You're almost there. Nice driving. Wow. As, as they say in Australia, send a meter perfect. So I'll pull forward now, right? Yep, let me just double check the brakes. But these, oh no, people did break a lot of these. Okay. This is the one that was hooked to the back of the mogul, remember, and it kept slipping? Oh, okay. So all the brakes are on all the cars. Let me just double check here. Oh my gosh. Okay, yep, so go ahead and pull forward. Can't get the, I can't get the light to turn on. Uh, that one has the compressor light, right? Oh, that's right. Okay. Yep. Sorry. So turn it on like 70% and that'll get it working. All right. You want me to pull forward? 
Ford. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't? No. Oh, well, it's not, it's not a biggie. I wonder why it's not working. It should be working. No, I look at it, if you point at it, it says you can uh, blow it out or whatever, but... Uh -oh. You're fine. You're fine. Just pull on. You got, you got enough track. We're almost clear. You got about two cars, one car, and yep, start slowing. And you got, man, maybe like, yep, clear. Oh, shiz. Hold on. I pushed the wrong switch. Dang it. That's the only downside about having switches so close together. I've been trying to design, lately I've been trying to design them so that they're not quite so close. So give me a second here to get to re, uh, re. I got an I got an idea about using a three way, but I, I want some help. Okay. On my map. I'm just gonna put this car over here for now, like with the other cars. Okay. Do you want me to back up then? Not yet. I haven't set the switches. Hold on a second. Let me get these. Okay. That's on this track, right? No, stop it. I hate it that it what they they don't. Like, once you set them down, they keep going. I don't know. I guess it's probably better that way, but... Okay, so we're going to do this, that, and uh, this, that. Brakes are off. That brake is on. I'm coming back your way. Okay. Am I going to need the... Am I going to need... Are you going to need my help coming back down or just going up? Probably coming back down, too. If you do, you have time? Do you think, or are you? Uh... I think so. Okay. If we don't, we don't. It's all right. All right. Come on back. Gotta love that Heisler, Mister Tractive Effort. What'd you say? I thought it looked different, but I just don't remember the original one. Yeah, they changed it a little bit. It had it had more of a like steel, like more steel details on the original one. The, it, the model's not ni as nice as it used to be. Um, the maybe more realistic. You're almost there. You're there. Now keep pushing back. Keep going back. About five feet. And stop. Come on. Brakes off on that car. Let me double check the brakes. I think I got the last brake on on these. I love that four poster. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm coming back up to the head end, and we are we are ready to depart. I love the love the whistle on that thing. Yeah, it, that, that's a, definitely a good whistle. Oh, are you getting the switch? <laughs> yeah. All right. This engine doesn't really have anywhere to stand on except for the very front. Oh, uh, we get that all the time. Normally, she's not a, she's not a real crier unless there's something wrong. That's what's nice about her. She just doesn't cry to cry. But there's something she doesn't have to do. I like it. Poor baby. Oh, yeah. So there is there no generator on this? No, I guess not. I thought this one had the uh, the headlamps. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll see you in just a second.
Oh, and one of the things that I found about the three-way, one of the things I found about the three-way switches, is that they do not. You can't just go through them uh, the opposite direction. Yeah, because they're not. They're, they could be sprung to a third location, so it's impossible for them to actually work like that. They work differently. So you gotta be real careful coming through them from the wrong side. <laughs> Micah's going to take the Heisler around the back side of the factory and we'll pick him up on the other side. That thing has such a great whistle. Yeah. It sounds beefy like it is beefy, you know. Yep. And that's because it's got the multi, multi-tone. Um, one of the, uh, the new engines also has... Actually, the Tweetsie has a pretty cool horn. Also, let's see. So you're coming around head in that way. So what I'm going to do is now when you get stop, when you get, uh, well, you'll see me. I need to move ahead and, um, is this one generator? Yeah, this one generator. Oops. Wrong. When you get around that back curve, slow way down, because I'm going to try to, I'm going to put this engine on the other track, and then I'm going to hook up behind you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're both, we're, we're headed towards each other right now. Clash of the engines. Brakes on. I'm stopped now. I'm going to reverse. So my engine will be running backwards, but that's fine. got to get the video out today <laughs> that's all right it's all right we'll uh what i'll see is what i'll do is i'll see if james is available to finish it okay you're like great fine <laughs> sorry mr boca wait wait uh don't go back stop wait oh, we're not looking together. no not that way no no oh, okay. you see what i'm doing like i'm gonna have you go past and then i'm gonna hook onto the back of your train I don't know if we'll make it. This is a pretty pretty long train. All right, so stop right there. And that should be good for now. And we'll just leave that. Thank you, Mr. Micah. You want me to move it forward? Uh, I mean, if you can, if you got time. Yeah, I got, I got a little more time. Like, at least I'll get it set. Okay. Did I get far enough ahead, do you think? We'll find out. Oh, there's plenty of space. Plenty of space. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Crush between the engines. I'll let you know when you're past. You're about three cars. Well, I need to be off the switch. Yeah. Cars rail. And you are clear. I'm not anywhere near the switch. Nope, you're good.
Man, you forget how much power these have. I'm giving it like 30% throttle because that's what I'm used to having to do. And the, it just jumps. It's like, wait, whoa. Yeah, all, all I'll do is uh, after I get that need for coming, we're just going up to that Mexican place uptown to eat. Oh, yeah. And we got the baby with us, so we can't eat real, real long. Okay. I'll get the switch for you. Thank you, Mr. Micah. Stay in your train. Yeah, your head. Give me a second. I almost got it. Now, does this, does this have a link on it? No. Throw the link in. How do you like the new cars? Love them. They're older. It depends. Some of the cars they gave us are newer than the ones that we have in, originally. And some of the cars they gave us, like those, are older than the ones that we had in the game already. So they're kind of filling in the gaps. I like the little skeleton car for the logs, though. That's perfect for Betsy. Is it, is it lower? It didn't look lower to me. Um, it's got... It's smaller. Like, it's lighter weight. Okay. You're almost there, car away. Half a car. About five feet. And you're touching. And you're locked. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Let me make sure I have locked. Yeah, okay. So the trains are all good. All right. I'm sorry. No I problem. Me, you want to say bye to every, you want to say bye to everybody? Bye everybody. Hope to see you guys soon. <laughs> bye everybody. Well, I'm not leaving, but Micah's leaving. Bye, Micah. It was really easy for me to put one in Micah's yard. It was really hard for me to put one in mine. Well, I've got a whole new section of the yard. You'll see when we get down there. Uh, do you want? So you want to run the climax? You have to run backwards. Not particularly. Which one do you, you want to do the Heisler? Yeah, I like the Heisler better. Okay, everybody likes the Heisler better. I really don't like the Climax. I love the Climax. No, I know. The Heisler is nicer. The Climax has more power, though. but It's a lot slower. But it's supposed to be. It's, you know. All right, give me whistle when you want throttle. By the way, Javius is here for those of you that didn't realize that. You should be all loaded up. I just I just fueled it. Yep. You told me right after I checked it. Okay. Break it breaks off. Breaks off. I'm in the throttle. I'm at twenty seven percent. Are those new or old coal cars? New. I haven't tried those yet. Yep. I got some new... I got We got two new engines, too. Or locomotives. Yeah, which ones? Uh, the Tweetsie, or the 10 Mile, and the uh, Ruby... Uh, whatever it is. So the Mason Bogey and the Tank Engine. Yeah. So the Tank Engine, is is that a British engine? No. So it is an American engine. What Now, why did we do the Tank Engine the British style? I have no idea. I don't know the act the history on the Ruby Basin. Okay. I'm at eighty one by the way. I'm at ninety. Okay. I just put it up to ninety six. What's the safest on, on mine, I, I think, isn't it? Uh, uh probably ninety two, ninety four. I mean, you oh. could test it now before we get too bad, because you could. I'll just leave. Material. I'm gonna leave it at 90. We're making it, so I, I think we'll, we'll be. That was the steepest part right there. If we can get up that, if we get up that, I think we got the whole thing. Which is impressive. How many cars we got? I mean, they're empty, but still, 16 cars, 17 cars, 16 cars. I'm looking at full wood cars and a rail car back. But yep, and then there's eight, there's eight coal cars. Well, I can only see three. Right. <laughs> I can't wait till they fix that. Yeah, CD Trumpet had a stream going earlier. I was watched it for a little bit, but he started repeating everything he already told us, and I'm like, all right, I'm good. You're like, I'm good. I know this all.
I'll be curious to see if the new coal hoppers hold the same as the old ones. They're supposed to. Pound-wise, the it says they're... The new uh, coffin tank cars only hold eight. Now, Whereas that's weird. So they hold less. Okay, I thought they held more. And the original tank cars hold 12. Now, what's but, funny is the original cars are the older car style, aren't they? I'm not sure. If you look at the dates, at least in the game, that co- the, the non-coffin ones are older. Mm. They're like 1890s, and then the coffin one is, is, the coffin style is 1900s. But we did end up, in real life, going with the, the other style. Right. And the, the coffin tank cars, I mean, they're significantly longer. Right. They line up at the oil terminal better. I was running those a little bit this morning. It's easier to get two cars spotted and loaded at one time. Oh. And they have the little hatch you can open, like the water tanks. On yeah. The tenders. You don't have to open them. Oh, okay. Have, the out has to be near them. But it does, they don't have to be open for the oil to go in. But if the spout's too far from them, it won't go in the car. So now, there's some magical want... hit box that you can't see. Interesting. Okay. Now, did you try the new um, water tower that has the... Because I tried to fill up the water on the um, Ruby Basin. Yes. And, of course, the tanks are offset. So I tried that new water tower with the one that can go, like, 90, 180 degrees. Yep. And I can't get water to come out of it. How do you trigger the water? You have to climb up the ladder, go around the front, and there's a valve wheel there. I couldn't get my guy to go up the ladder. Is your... Is the whole water tank building floating a little bit off the ground? Yes, it was. You have to jump up onto the ladder then. Oh. Just grab it and go. Okay. All right. That's good enough. Because I did have trouble with that, and I was like, man, I don't know how to do that. So. I'm at the summit. Starting okay. to dial back power. I'm at 30%. I'm at one. Uh, I'll bump it up to two. I'm at eight, and I have the regulator off. <laughs> I'm impressed that we got that long train up over the mountain. That oh, surprising. come on. You got the most powerful ga- engine in the game that you've got. Yeah, true. And I still, it's a pretty steep grade. One of the more powerful. Okay, brakes. Yeah, I'm already on full brake. We should be able to hold it with the two engines. Yeah, I'm at 43% brake and we're slowing down. Have Did you see, though, like uh, if you slam the brakes on, have you seen the wheel slide now? The engines actually slip. Yes, yeah. but... <laughs> Have you seen that if you do that with the Mason bogey, it doesn't. Okay. Now, why is that? Because the brakes, and this is something I learned on CD Trumpet's stream earlier, the brakes on the Mason bogey are actually on the tender truck. Oh, it's got both. The Mason bogey is the the 10 mile, right? The 10 mile, yes. Okay. And that, yes. Under the under the tender part or the coal bunk that's where the brakes are so when you throw full brakes the drivers don't slide oh because it has brakes it has two it has two brake handles it's got the the one for the tender and the one for the the engine even they're though the tender is even though the tender is attached but they're linked if you uh, use that one to full and Turn around and check the other one. It's also at full. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one you operate. Okay. I don't know 
if it's supposed to be that way. Um, Because it seems to be, to me, that the, a lot of these new engines, they have the air brake. Okay. Yes. Equipment on the cars. They've got the angle cocks at the end of the cars. Right. Um, At least one of the engine has two brake handles in it. Right. Which would be locomotive and then train yeah yeah so i think that at some time in the future when we get um when we get the air brakes that equipment will be all ready for it okay i'm uh zero zero everywhere here uh, so was I, but we're just stalling out, so I'm giving it some power. Give it some beans. I was out of the driving UI to join your company. But you can... I'm at 20% you, right now. You want to run up here and unload? Yeah, yep. I'm putting it back at zero, and I will run up there. Okay. I'm just, I'm falling off. Ah. All right, folks. So we're going to get this train unloaded and reloaded. And we will meet you back in the yard where we will try the culling station. I thought you guys would enjoy seeing the the double header push the train up. That's why I left that in. So I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, we'll get this all loaded and turned around. So we'll see you down at the culling station where we'll fill it up. And then we'll try to fill a little bit of coal back onto the uh, 10 mile. and, uh, And we'll go from there. All right, for information coming in for those of you viewers, uh, these cars also hold 10. So uh, whereas the other, the newer, the newer cars hold 10, these older cars also hold 10. All right, so we've made it back down the mountain, folks. And uh, JVS and I are rolling into the Petticoat Junction here. So it's going to be a little bit of an uphill jog for you. Come on, get up there. Get up. Get up there. Man, this engine has a really dim headlight. Good thing it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, yeah since we're not on night operations. Oh, I can't get on the train. Oh, well. There we go. I'll ride with you to the cooling tower. So does it unload automatically or do you have to trigger it? No, you'll have to trigger it just like an industry. All right. <clears throat> and you have to, yeah, the opposite side, not the cooling, not the tower side. You have to be on the grass side. Okay. What the? And I'm going to be running blind. Yeah, I know, because you can't see that far back. It's a shame. It's a shame. Okay, get ready to stop. And El Topo. Too soon? No, you're good. Per- it was actually perfect. You're right on. So when you said get ready to stop, I was already stopping. <laughs> yep. All right, and pull on forward. I would, but I'm on the ground with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, it, so it unloads into this back where it can hold 20. Yep. And then it runs yeah. up that elevator. Into the chute, yeah into the top or it's adding into the 120 total. Okay. So you can have 120 in the top and 20 more in the bottom. How much does an average engine carry? No idea. Okay. I haven't even made the coal pile look smaller yet on an engine. Okay. Yeah. Cause they just, no, I don't, I was, I was going to say we could refuel one, but I haven't used the one enough to refuel it. So. All right. Pull her forward. And get ready to stop. Stop.
All right, and pull on forward. If you go slow enough, we might be able to... Eh, I don't know. It's a very... Stop. I don't know how big the hitbox is because there's no indication on the ground. Wait, you, we got to back up a little bit. Sorry. Or just stop right there. Just stop for a second. Or don't. <laughs> Come on back. You're already moving. I was already in the... Yep. The Keep motion going. when you said that. Wow. Because we've got that big car lag now. A little further. And stop. And move on forward. Oh, you put a three-way in. Yep. Oh, you might have to throw that. Yeah, sorry. Oh, did you put a three-way in in front of me, too? Yeah, that's the only one. And stop. Oh. It's off to the side. It's okay. behind. It's on the other side of the cold. Oh, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So you see that little yard I put in there for the engines? Yep. All right, come on forward. All right, folks, we're going to get this loaded up, and then we'll take a real quick look at the number on the front, and then we'll be all set. All right, we have finished filling this up. Go ahead and pull all the way forward, uh, JVS. I'll tell you when to stop. You're going to just exit the yard and head on out, and then we're going to back this into the yard. So I'll need to get it onto a track and figure that out. So we're going to split it into two. We're going to put the coal cars on one track and then the, uh, the goods cars on another track. Okay. So we know now that the Heisler and Climax are capable of returning the empty cars and pulling a full load of goods, of eight good good cars, up the tracks, no problem. So this is about the size of the train that will be going up and down that hill, which it kind of needs to be because that's a long trip, and it, it's good to get it all done in one pass if we can. So the idea was – I, I don't think I originally thought 16 cars, but that's about what we're going to have to do. So, And the last car is crossing the switch. And we are clear. Give me a minute. Don't back up yet. Let me get the track set, and I'll tell you when we're we're clear to go through. Um, let's see. We'll put the eight coal cars on uh, track four. Two, three, four. So we'll check these and make sure that's kind of, that's not coming back the right way. All right, come on back. And there should be plenty of room. Are we kicking or doing it the safe way? <laughs> what do you mean? Where you disconnect the oh. car and I stop and you roll them into the line? We could do that. Let me... Uh get up far enough that I can do that. All right, kick. So we got enough momentum here to get past the area. Should be good. Full brakes. Yep. And let's see if we made it into the siding. Perfect. Yep, there's plenty of space down at that end. And the cars are stopped. And there's plenty of space down at this end. Very nice. Good job, Javius. Let me remove the clips here. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put those cars on... Track two. So come on back. Yep, 
The only thing I don't like about those, and maybe you can help me out on this, but with the three-way switch, it seems like the direction indicator is opposite of which way the track is going. It is. So how do you fix that? You can't. And what is the difference between harp left and harp right? What does that mean? Is that the is that the difference? One points the right way and one points opposite? Harp? You have options for harp left and harp right. Oh, I have don't know. Oh that no, that's just which side that's just which side the harp is on. Never mind. Oh, the switch stand. Yeah. Being the harp. We far enough in. You got it. All right, go ahead and pull her. Do you, We should probably run her through the reverse loop. Is that, are we going to back her down to the... Are we doing something else with her? Or are we gonna nope, that's it. Her? Nope. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this video as we did a little bit of train work here also. I wanted I wanted to have some train fun in here in the video for you. I apologize for the long video. Actually, that was a little short compared to our normal <laughs> videos. Uh, but um, you're clear to go back. Uh, but uh, we got a lot done. We got uh, the coal station filled up for our engines here, at least halfway filled. And we took a, a load of goods up to the coal mine and then brought down eight loads for that. So we now have eight cars for the coal industry, which is good. We need them. And um, so next up, I'll be buying more cars. I'm going to get a, I want to get a second one of these goods trains uh, that we can park on this track along with this one. We'll, we'll have 16 cars parked here. They can be split up and used for different purposes. But uh, yeah, so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night and we will see you next time. Bye.